words. We added four lines, uh, and uh, it propelled us uh, to twenty-five thousand metric tons of uh, stretch film uh, back then, which was uh, quite big. Uh, time the year uh, nineteen ninety-nine, uh, we were exporting uh, garbage bags to Japan, and it was growing. The Japanese came to us and says that if you're not in China, you're not competitive. So having uh, got that message, we followed the, our Taiwanese uh, friend and ventured into the manufacturing of uh, garbage bags uh, and stretch them, uh, for the, especially for the Japanese market in uh, China. It was very strategic uh, to China at that time because uh, plenty uh, labor was plentiful. The, um, uh, the close proximity uh, means that um, the Japanese uh, like uh, just-in-time concept. Uh, space is uh, is a luxury in, in Japan. Uh, thus, um, we can uh, send from the Shanghai port where we we we, we, work, we are to uh, even the east coast of Japan. For example, the the, the port of uh, the small port in Niigata and all that uh, within a short time from uh, our factory. The order. Uh, processing took place the first day and within seven days the goods are already in, in the warehouse of the customer in Japan. Whereas if you send from Malaysia, uh, the shipping time alone will take you two weeks, you know, and it will take at least three weeks for the goods to, you know, if not one month for the goods to reach. Uh, thus China was very strategic at that time and from 2000 onwards we blew the China story. Our China venture was very successful. Um, we grew from zero to uh, 1,500 ton within a period of three to four years. Uh, and the stretch film was growing as well at that time. Um, we grew quite ex ex exponentially at that time uh, with these two products. Um, uh, we were on a 7.4 acre site in Suzhou, about one hour drive from uh, Shanghai. Uh, and. Um, Within a period of four, four years, we have uh, completed building, you know, the whole 7.4 acres. We thought it was going to be like a 10 year project, you know, but um, within three, uh, within four to five years, it was completely built out over three phases. Initially, it was the uh, garbage bag plant then the stretch field plant. And at the back of it was the warehouse and also the workers quarters. Um, then we bought a, another 16 acres piece of land in uh, nearby in, in Suzhou for our expansion. But come 2008, when uh, Beijing was hosting the Olympics, the Chinese government stance uh, on foreign investment and labor consumption, on their concern on environment and all that grew and the policy changed, um, you know, like overnight. Thus, it was not very conducive, the, the uh, acceleration of the wage uh, level in China was uh, very drastic as well. Because it makes it very uh, um, not very attractive uh, to continue to invest in China anymore. So from 08 onwards, uh, um, and then the there was a financial crisis in 08 when the oil price went from uh, $150 per barrel, the crude down to about 40, 45 per barrel. Our raw material went from 1,700. Uh, dollars per metric US dollars per metric ton to seven hundred dollars per metric ton. The lowest we bought, I remember, was five hundred fifty uh, per metric ton. Um, and we in fourth quarter of zero eight, we had our first ever quarterly loss um, because uh, we were holding on to four and a half month stocks. We have uh, sixty containers of uh, stretching on the way to the Saint Petersburg port in in Russia. Uh, and uh, the customer, the Russian, paid ten percent for the goods, but and then they cannot take it because if they say that if we take it, having the price having dropped so much, we'll go bankrupt. <laughs> so uh, we, it took us about six months to sell off the, the slowly uh, with numerous charges and all that uh, in the icy freezing cold port from Saint Petersburg uh, winter. Uh, and uh, at the end of the year, the auditors, KPMG, came in and says that it is the lower of cost and net realizable value for your um, stocks. Um, so it was a big slashing and uh, thus we had our first ever quarterly loss. After that, we had never had uh, a loss. We had never had a loss uh, in a full year. We were still profitable. I think about four or five million ringgit for that year. Um, 
after the event uh, come uh, 2010 um, profit we grew back uh, our uh, profit level to about 20 25 million ringgit levels uh, and uh, we were thinking of uh, the next stage where to where do we move and then the consolidation happened in the industry come 0405 uh, sorry 1415 uh, uh, our, com our competitor uh, bought over one of, one of our large competitor as well uh, and uh, we were, you know, fueling our growth based on volume at the time. We, uh, because, you know, volume is basically uh, a no-brainer. Um, you, you increase your volume, economies of scale will come in. Um, and uh, you had your increase in, in profitability as well. Um, because simply because, uh, you know, your one manager can take care of uh, five lines or ten lines, uh, instead of three lines, for example, having the same salary and probably a slight increase and all that, you know. Um, in uh, one four, uh, we knew that, uh, you know, we cannot outgrow them in terms of uh, volume anymore. We were, they came in to make stretch film in uh, July of 1997. We started uh, making stretch film in November 1997 and we were head on and competing uh, since then and come uh, 20 mid of 2015 uh, um, after the consolidation we thought you know we we were thinking of which direction to move we were at a crossroad at the time um, and um, we went to europe and have a look around and uh, we always do that uh, when we went to the into stretch film manufacturing we went to europe and us and have a look as well um, and uh, we decided that we saw uh, Industry 4.0 coming very strongly in Europe and we decided that uh, this is the way that we need to move. Thus, uh, we invested uh, in 2016, we invested <coughs> into building up the uh, Newton uh, Research and Development Center and also invested into heavy, uh, uh, um, technology um, we become. We want to become the best uh, technology company in the region. Um, our uh, endeavor um, has been paying off uh, since then. Um, we went from uh, a value, sorry, a volume proposition company to a value proposition company, and from to 2016 onwards, um, we grew uh, in terms of uh, margins, and uh, which I'll elaborate uh, later. Yeah. Uh, then um, also um, we went into the production of a very premium stretch film, nano layer technologies. Um, we also um, went into the uh, manufacturing of uh, um, courier bags as well. Um, in 2017, uh, we celebrated our 75th anniversary, 1942 to uh, 2017, 75 years, believe it or not. <laughs> um, uh, during that celebration, uh, we the theme of the celebration was to double up uh, our size. In 2016, December year end audited, we were doing about 750 million ringgit in, in terms of revenue. And uh, we would like to uh, double that up to 1.5 billion in five to seven years. Uh, we are glad to report that uh, the, the project is uh, ongoing it's, uh, and we are on the way of achieving that. Um, we are confident that this year uh, our revenue should be able to hit uh, 1 billion ringgit. We did about 938 billion, sorry, 938 million ringgit last year. Um, the Duli and Tramat Mulia, the Raja Muda of Kedah, uh, sits as chairman of our board. Uh, these are the five pillars of our packaging section. Uh, stretch film, uh, which is about 45%, and we are growing this section uh, like no tomorrow uh, in the next uh, five years as well, which we will elaborate. Garbage bags has been very traditional for us. We started making garbage bags in 1993. Commercial bags, film, and sheet, we are growing this section as well, including the courier bag section. PVC food wrap was the star of our business. Uh, 
we were at a crossroad and we were thinking of what to do and we went on, on a diversification spree. One of the product was uh, PVC food wrap, uh, which we grew from zero to uh, 12 lines currently compounding. Uh, also, uh, we grew uh, during our diversification spree um, and we, we want to go on the value proposition as well. Tea and coffee, our traditional market, we have been making a profit every year since the inception. So this is the cash cow of the, of the company with uh, the strong 888 brand behind it. Organic noodles, we went into the manufacturing of this product, offering high margins. Um, we are the 10th largest producer of stretch film in the world. This is uh, not what we say. This is uh, according to research by Applied Market Information, a UK uh, based, very respected, uh, well known uh, international um, market research company. They, they, have, they do a lot of publications, uh, periodicals, uh, journals, um, whole seminars, uh, technical uh, publications, and, and the like. Um, we have currently uh, 12 conventional lines and uh, currently uh, four uh, premium stretchum lines with two lines in, in China. We were the first uh, company in Asia Pacific to introduce the thin gauge film, which I'll explain later under a max stretch label. <coughs> we were the first to went into the Van, Van Wagen to optimize film usage uh, on a low containment design, efficient uh, high speed wrapping, reduced packaging costs uh, for our customers, and also um, increasing the, sorry, uh, complying with the safety standards in Europe uh, and uh, uh, in line with the sustainability concept of uh, using less uh, or optimizing your, your packaging uh, film requirements. Our, uh, the, the nano film or the premium uh, stretch film section is growing very uh, rapidly. Our, our market in Europe aided by uh, UMOS 40509. UMOS 40509 is the European uh, uh, standards. The UMOS is the European Safe Logistics Association, which set up these standards for safe logistics. Uh, and 40509 is the standards for uh, pallet safety, uh, load stability. Um, so we uh, adopted this concept and uh, um, embrace it. And this has become the standard in our Newton lab today. Um, global demand forecast uh, to average 5% uh, moving forward, um, 4.4 4 million metric ton. Um, uh, 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 what do you call that? Uh, by, by 2021, it should be hitting uh, over 5 million ton for the consumption, consumption of a stretch film. In Asia Pacific, it will continue to register high growth of uh, 7 to 8%. Um, we will commission uh, our fifth uh, nanotechnology line uh, in our factory on the 16 acres land uh, uh, this year, hopefully by end of this month. Uh, this is what we thrive in. This is the uh, a nano a high speed nano film. This is taken at one of our uh, this, uh, at one of our customers' plant in Milai, uh, this Milan. Uh, this uh, machine uh, moves at about 40 to 50 revolutions a minute. Um, the conventional uh, wrap, machine wrap film uh, moves at about um, 10 to 15 revolutions a minute. The machine in our Newton lab uh, runs at about um, uh, 70 to 80 revolutions a minute. Um, I will explain to you uh, later on why we need this. Uh, garbage bags has been our traditional market. We started exporting our first, our first export market was actually Japan when Jetro, the Japanese external trade organization came to us and asked us in 1993, whether we were interested to export to Japan. We say we can try, uh, you know, having tried, uh, you know, for one more than one year, two, almost two years uh, before we got the orders. Now we know, you know, the, this is the concept of the Japanese. They will visit you three, four times and before they place the first order to make sure that you know you improve things, you are serious and, and, and the like. And uh, we were quite fortunate at that time uh, to be able to, to be assisted by Jetro. Um, uh, from the first container in 1983, 
we became the largest uh, exporter of garbage bags to the Japanese market today, commanding about 12% of the total garbage bags used in Japan. Uh, we export our market and compass from uh, Hokkaido um, at the top, uh, at the north of Japan down to Okinawa. All, almost all the prefectures uh, uh, we are in contact with. Um, we, the, the plan, we have already exceeded our plan of uh, the 25,000 metric ton. So we are still growing this section uh, at about 5% a year. Um, we, um, um, with the expansion, you know, we are not expanding in, uh, in China anymore. Not very conducive. The labor cost uh, is going up quite high because this, is, uh, this garbage bag is quite labor intensive. Um, small machines running uh, small jobs uh, because of the many print orders. Uh, there are more than 100 over prefectures in Japan and every single piece of the bags needs to be folded three times. If you don't have a folding machine, which you see, uh, this is the folding machine at the back, uh, then, then it is very difficult for you to, to, to make uh, Japanese garbage bags. Um, Commercial bag swim and sheets, uh, we are growing this section uh, very uh, drastically. Um, this is one of our focus of growth uh, moving forward. Um, this also encompasses the uh, courier bags. Um, uh, TGW, one of our uh, joint venture with the Hong Kong partner, uh, commenced manufacturing of uh, courier, these courier bags uh, in uh, 2019. Um, and, uh, we during the first year, uh, we started in December, January, January 2019. <coughs> we had losses for the first five months. <coughs> Come uh, May 2019, we made our maiden profit and uh, had not uh, looked back since. Um, 2019, we did about 400 uh, metric ton a month at the end of 2019. Uh, today, we are doing about 600 and we want to increase that to 800 uh, by the end of the year uh, with uh, new machines uh, coming in. Um, these are the, the some of the products uh, that we have uh, ventured into uh, over the past five years. These are high precision uh, machine wrap um, uh, packaging, uh, pillow bags, sugar bags, uh, um, which uh, require a high precision in terms of uh, thickness consistency because the, mach the wrapping machine automatic, you see the rolls put into the machine, automatic packing machine uh, moves very fast um, and you need uh, consistent uh, quality uh, and mechanical pr uh, properties uh, um, to support it. Um, we, we move into this product uh, in 2017 and we are growing uh, very fast in this area. This on the right is the uh, Stretch hood. Uh, this is taken at one of the. <laughs> so in uh, twenty seventeen, and uh, it is growing uh, very fast for us as well. Uh, courier bags. You can see that uh, these are courier bags to mainly to USA. Uh, our only market currently, we don't even do it for locally or ASEAN. We only, it's hundred percent to uh, USA. Uh, PVC food wrap, um, due to the MCO, this product is slowed down because the restaurants and uh, hotels uh, are slowing down. Uh, thus, um, we, uh, we are trying to find new markets uh, for, for this product uh, and the travel restriction has not helped. Uh, currently, we have 12 lines running um, and we plan for another 10 lines uh, in a new factory. Uh, and we want to be the biggest uh, producer of this product in Asia Pacific in the next five years. Compounding, we are moving to more value added products, the color master batches, the additives, uh, processing aid, for example, the uh, anti-blocks, uh, UV stabilizers, the uh, uh, sleeps and, and the like, uh, moving up the value chain uh, instead of the filler calcium carbonate uh, that we make uh, traditionally. Uh, this is the layout of the uh, of the op uh, operations where we are, we are. Uh, this is if you can see the cursor this is the uh, our HQ 
uh, three-story front office. Uh, at the back of it is the garbage bag manufacturing. And the uh, we, we used to have four lines here, a uh, stretch rack line. We've shifted it out and two nano layer project. Uh, sorry, the Pioneer project was done here. The two layer, uh, the two uh, new uh, premium stretch film line. At the back of it, we have uh, 12 lines of uh, conventional lines and uh, to, uh, we knocked down the, the office, the, the, the storage office as well, and uh, put two more lines uh, at the back here. Uh, thus, we have four lines of uh, nano films, and at the back of it is the uh, um, blown film facilities, manufacturing the, plus, the commercial industrial plastic bags film and sheet, including the stretch hood and uh, uh, automatic packing bags, lamination films, and the like. Uh, at the back of it is the noodle plant, um, three acres. Uh, TGW is here. We used these are a uh, used uh, um, used to be a, a injection molding company which we bought for our for the contingency for our stretch film um, uh, expansion in in case this uh, this facility, the new facility, is not able to be ready because the line keep coming. We have placed the order already, and uh, we we need contingency plan. Uh, and came twenty eighteen, end of twenty eighteen, our Hong Kong partner came and uh, they they see the place and they find it suitable, and they decided uh, that uh, they like the place, and uh, we went on the joint venture, started the the operation in uh, 2019 for Korea Bags uh, business. Our compounding, compounding plant is on a three acre plant here. And this is uh, the, on the middle is the, uh, the purple square here. Uh, is, is the 16 acres land that we bought uh, three years ago. Um, and uh, this, is, this is going to be our next uh, billion ringgit uh, uh, expansion. On this uh, 16 acres, uh, we built uh, this plant here on, on the red uh, um, blocks. Uh, it is a 110,000 square feet uh, manufacturing facility. Currently, our fifth uh, premium stretch line is sitting here. Um, it's been sitting here since uh, uh, after Chinese New Year, March, and then the MCO hit and uh, the engineers cannot come in. Uh, one guy was trying to tinkle to, to, to assemble a big line. Uh, we hope to run it uh, by end of this month or early next month. Uh, very concrete plans. It should, be, it should run by uh, this, this premium line uh, by end of this month. Um, uh, also, uh, we have plans to, uh, to put uh, eight uh, seven or ten more additional, ten, seven to ten additional lines uh, in this facility here for our expansion. One stretch film line, uh, premium big ones, uh, can uh, generate about 80 to 100 million ringgit of uh, revenue a year. Thus, uh, the ten lines here alone should be able to generate, you know, 800 uh, million ringgit uh, a year already. Um, on the left here uh, of the building, uh, we have uh, received uh, last week the uh, approval to start building uh, the Kuribak uh, expansion uh, facility. They've run out of space uh, in the, in the 3.7 acre location, uh, extending the roof and everywhere for storage and, and, and all that. And uh, they told us that they need uh, a new facility, more than 100,000 square feet. Uh, for their expansion, um, and the plant is going to be ready before Chinese New Year. Thus, there was a rush, big time rush, uh, to get this this plant ready. The uh, the foundation and all that has been has been done already, and the erection of the the building proper uh, is on the way uh, with the uh, recent approval of the building plans. Uh, we it should be uh, running um, by uh, second quarter of next year. Here it is the expansion of a blown film facility, the front five-story office. We run off, we're running out of uh, office space, uh, really. Um, and uh, we need a, a new um, HQ to house uh, the staff uh, for more efficient uh, uh, working space uh, to attract uh, new talent with uh, better facilities uh, for the staff. 
Um, and uh, this task list is planned. Um, this at the, uh, at the area here, uh, you know, we move on. Uh, this is the expansion for the uh, storage area. Um, this plan, uh, uh, the Bloomfield plan, I will explain it here. Uh, we plan to have uh, 20 lines here. Uh, one line can generate between 20 to 25 million ringgit uh, a year. So um, 10 lines will generate about, two, about 200 million here and uh, 20 lines will be 400 million ringgit uh, at its maturity. Um, um, this is the uh, about uh, 15 minutes away is the uh, our old uh, Bloomfield facility um, which we have converted to make the PVC food wrap. Um, this is because the height is, is not so high so we, we, we shifted to, uh, to, to near the HQ. Uh, initially we were planning for only four lines uh, converting the, the back manufacturing space here. We put in two lines initially in 20 10, 20, 11, and uh, the next year we've already put two more lines uh, because of the high demand. Uh, we planned four lines initially because our Korean partner was is uh, having four lines as well in their plan. Then uh, demand was uh, was very fast. Thus, uh, we expanded to put in uh, six more lines here to have ten lines. Um, but due to the uh, you know when uh, the previous government uh, the the environment minister was very concerned about uh, plastic and uh, we, there was a delay in getting approvals to, to build the, the plant here uh, and the, the line was coming so we knocked down the, uh, the, the store warehouse here as well, the, the warehousing and put in two more lines. First we have uh, eight lines here and four lines here, total 12 lines. In the front is the storage area, which we, which we completed, completed refurbishing and the front story, the, the, the three-story three, three front office. Uh, this plan here uh, on the five-acre land, we plan to uh, build, uh, to have uh, 10 more lines, uh, which uh, has been planned since two years ago. Uh, but the MCO has slowed, slowed down uh, the, ex the expansion. Um, Five minutes away from the PVC food wrap plant is the T facility. We started here <coughs> on this uh, here in uh, 1942, the, the pre-war shop houses, and we built a T manufacturing facility, and we have eight acres here for expansion. Um, this is uh, in Gurun, which is about 20 minutes away from the T plant. Uh, on an eight and a half acre site, we bought this facility eight and a half acres for eight million ringgit in uh, 2011 uh, and uh, last year we made uh, 6 million ringgit out of this. We bought uh, the, tree, the adjacent land, 3.5 acres for the expansion of the uh, garbage bags uh, manufacturing. We are in more than uh, 70 countries, 80% uh, of our sales is exported. Uh, food and beverage, we are growing this section still, growing at uh, about 5% rate, uh, but we are growing faster in Southern Thailand, which we, uh, we put out a plant in Southern Thailand. Um, uh, Southern Thailand has been our quite traditional market for our another brand, 666 brand, which has been imitated, passed off. Uh, <laughs> if you go to the Hajai market, uh, one pack original, you know, you will see two or three packs imitated, uh, um, tea, you know, so uh, there's the need to move with that into southern Thailand and uh, started manufacturing there. And we wanted we would want to clamp down the uh, all this uh, imitated tea. So the, the the growth there is uh, gradual as well in in southern Thailand, and we are moving to Krabi and also to the uh, northern uh, Bangkok market, which is which is bigger. Uh, Financial highlights, uh, you can read all about it. We are more than 100 million ringgit uh, net cash uh, now. Um, <coughs> market capitalization is now close to a billion. This is it's been outdated. Uh, uh, this graph uh, shows uh, our annual gro our growth uh, over the past uh, six years. Uh, 2019, last year, we did a revenue of about 940 million ringgit. Um, and a profit of uh, before tax of about uh, 75 million ringgit. Uh, 
after tax was about 64 million ringgit. Um, and uh, this year we should be growing uh, double digit as well. Uh, if you look at the quarterly uh, uh, results, um, the gross profit level is where we look at, or KPI is set on the gross profit level. Uh, and uh, over the past uh, five quarters, we've maintained it uh, to be in the mid high teens. We would like to maintain this uh, moving forward and move it up to the high teens level. This is the graph that we, 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 we look at uh, every quarter. Uh, <clears throat> this is our um, fi uh, financials uh, since uh, 1994. Um, we, we grew from a 60 million ringgit company uh, combined revenue um, to a uh, 940 million ringgit uh, company uh, last year. And over the uh, 20 over years, uh, 30 over years, we, we had never had a year of uh, losses. Uh, you can see the record. <coughs> uh, the profit after tax harvest uh, uh, the two zero in two zero I explained to you just now, and there was a, a, a dip in twenty fourteen as well due the due to the oil price as well. Um, rev segmental revenue uh, stretch film is about forty five percent of revenue. Um, you can see stretch film growing from forty four to forty five percent from three hundred seventy eight million to four hundred and sixteen million due to the uh, rapid uh, growth of the premium uh, stretch film section. Industrial bags um, uh, is growing as well, but not as, uh, uh, we carved it out actually to, to include uh, courier bags, 5% uh, here, um, from zero to 5% within uh, one year. And uh, it is growing, still growing very, very strongly. Garbage bag is still growing, but not as fast as uh, the other section. Uh, similarly, the PVC food wrap, uh, which was growing from zero to seven, eight percent, nine percent of our revenue, uh, it's uh, it's having a plateau now. We, and we, after the uh, MCO, we plan to grow this section more as well. Uh, food and beverage uh, is is maintaining at seven percent uh, uh, and uh, growing. Uh, key takeaways: We uh, got. 10 conventional, 12 conventional lines and uh, four uh, nano lines. We are the 10th largest producer of stretch film, blah, blah, blah. Um, innovation, uh, in terms of innovation, we uh, we started this project that we call this the Teen Film Project, the Max Stretch Teen Film Project in 2014. Uh, we were the first uh, company to work with uh, ExoMobil at that time to come up with this uh, this project to, to make the film very, very stiff using the enable material. Um, um, the concept is basically very simple. Uh, conventional film, hand wrap, yeah, using hand to wrap, not machine wrap, is uh, about 23 microns. Uh, your average thickness of your hair is about 20 micron. Um, and the, the standard uh, roll of film in Malaysia is about 2.06 kilogram and it will yield you 2.209 meters uh, with our uh, max stretch of 12 micron having similar strength mechanical properties. Uh, we, uh, we give you uh, with 2.06 kilogram a uh, 400 meter roll. With uh, 209 meters, you wrap four rows. With uh, 400 meters, you wrap eight rows. So uh, it is a 100% increase in terms of uh, yield. Four uh, pallets to eight pallets. Uh, and the price is probably 25% more. This is a no-brainer. You pay 25% increase in price and you get 100% in terms of yield. Uh, this product is selling very well initially in the most sophisticated Australian, New Zealand market. Uh, and then move on to uh, South Korea, South uh, Africa market, and then slightly to Europe uh, uh, and the like. Um, and uh, we are still expanding this product and still commanding some premium uh, with this product. Na uh, nano film, 33 layers, the concept is just uh, um, uh, like a plywood effect concept, giving you uh, better mechanical properties, a stronger proposition, work, work very well with the uh, uh, high-speed uh, wrapping machines. 
uh, Europe has moved to Industry 4.0. Um, pallet sizes uh, has become smaller due to the space. Uh, now everything is put on the floor. There's not no uh, no staff. Uh, staff is very expensive. There's, uh, everything is on the floor, and sports uh, floor space has become very luxurious item. And uh, they shrink the pallet size from uh, full full euro pallet size to quarter of a of a of a pallet to half uh, to half pallet to quarter pallet. So these are, for example, these are example of quarter pallet sizes of uh, mineral waters, uh, sodas, uh, uh, milk, uh, juices, and, and, and the like. Uh, and thus, you know, uh, in uh, in in the in the plant, in the beverage plant, mineral water, beer, for example, they need to wrap what four five times faster because the the you, you need to wrap more pallets. That's uh, you need to increase the speed of wrapping from 10, 15 to 40, 50 revolutions a minute uh, to keep up. Then uh, everything is moving uh, very robotics. Um, this is the advent of uh, Industry 4.0. Today, you, in Europe, you do not need to reorder anymore. The reordering system is triggered at the uh, checkout counters. Uh, when, the, when they reach, for example, the Coca-Cola reached the reorder level, um, the DC will just send automatically without having to reorder and then send you the bill. Uh, thus, uh, um, the, the floor space is, 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 is very important. Uh, and uh, our, our film uh, thrives in this, this area. Uh, Lord Kelvin says that um, if you do not measure, you cannot improve. What you do better will be degraded. Uh, we believe in this uh, phrase, and we will. We have been the first company to do uh, measuring of uh, the, the the amount of uh, film used per pallet, uh, the kilo, the gram. For example, um, cur currently the customers wrap the uh, uh, a pallet of uh, uh, mineral water using 450 grams of film, all right? Uh, on our benchmark, we know that we can, use, we can do it with about 330 grams, which, uh, and we promise them that if they send three pallets of the mineral water to our uh, facility in the, the research at uh, the Newton R&D Center, we will optimize the, the packaging for them, guaranteeing them European safety standards, UMOS, uh, there's guaranteeing them that there's no damage during transportation. Damage meaning that you know your mineral water is dented or during transportation your Kellogg's conflicts is dented and not sellable. Uh, these are all hidden costs that the brand owners knows and uh, they you know that is a big hassle. That's uh, our concept is to guaranteeing that, that safety, no uh, load stability, no damage. Uh, and also uh, cost savings, the most important part. Um, after testing, uh, we we know that you know we probably can down uh, down gauge it to about uh, right gauge it. I mean the word <laughs> the word is right gauging now to probably three hundred ten to three hundred twenty grams. That's a savings of uh, um, more than thirty percent to the to the customers, and we prove that every year. Uh, by having a, a QR code on our rolls. Every rolls has got a QR code. Um, uh, and this QR code is scanned and is, is uh, safe every batch of it. After uh, quality testing, the data is safe in the, in the cloud. And at, at the customer's end, at the packaging uh, machine, we install a black box to, uh, to detect all the, what, uh, what the roll is doing. Uh, the QR code is scanned to the black box and uh, the amount of uh, pallets wrapped is recorded. Uh, the, any downtime is recorded. Um, and <clears throat> uh, at the end of the, of the month, we send a report to the procurement manager and showing them that uh, this is the amount of film used to wrap this X number of pallets. And these are the savings that we promise you. Uh, Myanmar proposed manufacturing plan, which is supposed to be up uh, this year due to the MCO that's been delayed. Um, unfortunately, uh, this project is uh, quite important for us uh, simply because um, 
we realized that uh, globalization has uh, basically ended. Uh, the world is moving towards uh, PACs. You got your NAFTA, North, North America, ASEAN, your uh, uh, African PAC, uh, your uh, GAF uh, um, section, the, the EU and, and the likes. Uh, thus, 80% um, of our sales is export, so it's, it's very high, very dangerous uh, to continue. Um, this uh, already, you know, uh, we, our export to Europe is attracting 6.5% import duty. Um, previously, in the past uh, five, ten years ago, uh, to Europe, it, is, it was zero due to the uh, WTO uh, general system of, of preference, GSP. Uh, for uh, developing countries uh, with, with the privilege given to the developing countries. But now Malaysia is not considered uh, in this category anymore. Uh, and uh, it's getting uh, tougher for exporters like ourselves. Thus, uh, we thought that Myanmar would be a suitable place for expansion because Myanmar is being is very, very underdeveloped and under WTO rules, underdeveloped countries has got privilege. So from Myanmar, for example, to, to any countries, Europe, you know, it, it will go uh, at 0%, go in at 0%. From Malaysia, it's already 6.5%. So it's a big, big, big amount. Um, and Myanmar is also because the, the, the Japanese government is helping them to, to develop. Um, it's offering a very attractive uh, tax incentives, five years, uh, Pioneer status in Malaysia, uh, tax waiver, income tax waiver for five years, and the next seven years at 50% discount, um, and various other uh, incentives. Um, the local market, 60 over million population, is also attractive for us moving forward. The labor cost is uh, very low in Myanmar. Um, the average labor cost is about $80 US dollars per person. $80 is less than um, 500 ringgit. So if you benchmark it with OT and the like to 500 ringgit, say, you know, we double that up to 1,000 ringgit. We are paying our Bangladeshis uh, with OTs and all that at least 2,000 ringgit a month now uh, in Malaysia. So there's a gap of, say, you know, more than 1,000 ringgit difference. If you hire 500 workers, it's equivalent to uh, half a million ringgit uh, in terms of salary difference, a year it is six million ringgit difference. Thus, uh, it is not quite a no-brainer for us to 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 move there for the uh, labor-intensive uh, products. So, what we're going to do there? Um, the plan is to 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 build up the whole uh, two hectares land uh, in in Myanmar. This is going to be a hundred and sixty thousand square feet factory. Uh, the first zone is for the stretch film. I mentioned just now, it's attracting 6.5% uh, import duty. Thus, uh, it's a no-brainer to do uh, our Europe, our uh, export to Europe from here instead of from Malaysia. Uh, we plan to have one line here. Um, if we export 1,000 ton from here, we will save us in terms of a 6.5% uh, tariff, uh, at least 5 million ringgit a year. The second zone is uh, is for the small kitchen tidy bags to Japan, which we are doing in China, and it's getting very expensive to, to do it in China now. Uh, the, 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 it's very uh, strategic to, to, to produce it in Myanmar. Uh, and uh, this, this product commands a very high premium as well, because nobody wants to do it, not even uh, China uh, do, do not want to do it anymore. The, uh, the, everything moved to Vietnam now. So Vietnam is uh, quite overloaded and uh, with uh, uh, Myanmar uh, rich levels, we believe that it will be very, very competitive to, to expand uh, this, this product, uh, this kitchen, small, small kitchen tidy bags uh, for, the, for the Japanese market. Also uh, on zone three is the uh, expansion uh, for the uh, um, uh, T-shirt gar garbage bags to Japan. The, it is very labor intensive having to do it. The T-shirt meaning, the, you know, there's a handle to the garbage bags. Uh, the demand is increasing. Uh, it's commanding uh, uh, quite a premium as well. It's got to be semi-auto fit into the machine and it's quite labor intensive as well. 
us. Uh, he wanted to do this product as well. The past five years, uh, we have moved away from a value proposition. Uh, that's uh, um, since we uh, I mentioned just now, we've changed our direction from a volume uh, building a company to a value building company, focusing on technology and uh, premium products, um, offering uh, good margins. We established the uh, Newton Research and Development Center. Uh, to do a lot of testing, uh, load stability, um, uh, UMOS 40509 uh, testing uh, for safety, meet European standards uh, for customer savings, um, uh, extensive testing on a stretch hood stretch film uh, capability, which we've developed over the past five years. Uh, it also provides a talent pool for us to train our people. Uh, uh, there. We have uh, installed uh, five premium stretch film line. The fifth line, like I mentioned just now, is still sitting. We hope to run it uh, by end of this year, uh, uh, sorry, end of, end of this month, uh, capable of generating 400 to 500 million uh, revenue uh, a year for us uh, from this, these five lines. You can see our growth over the past five years has been um, derived uh, uh, primarily from uh, these stretch film products high, uh, with, the, with the high growth, especially to the more developed countries in Europe, in uh, South Af Africa, South Korea, Australia, New Zealand, uh, US, Mexico, uh, the like. Uh, installation of our three premium blown film lines. So we've just installed our third uh, premium blown film lines, manufacturing uh, stretch hood, lamination films, um, premium uh, automatic packing machine, which I show you just now. Uh, films uh, and one line is able to generate between twenty to twenty-five million ringgit revenue. And these three, boom, uh, the third line is uh, is just been completed assembling, and we hope to run it by Monday, by next Monday. Um, and we have plans, concrete plans to add, you know, ten uh, to grow this section uh, very fast as well. Um, we started the premium courier bag business in 2019, uh, and we want to to do about between 80 to 100 million ringgit this year, uh, and you know you saw our plans to grow this section as well uh, moving forward. Uh, the next five years, uh, what we're going to do moving forward, uh, the 16 acres manufacturing facilities that you saw just now, which we call our next uh, billion ringgit, is where the next billion ringgit is coming from. Premium stretch film line, the next five years, we want to put five more lines there, generating about 400, 500 million ringgit. Uh, blown film lines, the next five years, 10 lines, at the rate of two lines a year, 200 million ringgit from there. Of course, you saw this now, we at the maturity is 20 lines. Premium courier bag uh, business, specialty bags, uh, 200 million. The plant is, uh, should be ready by before Chinese New Year this year. 200 million there. Uh, on the uh, two hectare side in the Tilawa, about 150 million uh, producing uh, premium stretch from the Europe. I mentioned just now premium uh, kitchen tidy bags, 30 to 40 million ringgit revenue. Um, individually folded uh, t shirt garbage bags, uh, labor intensive, for about 30 million ringgit. Uh, you saw just now as well on the three and a half acre uh, expansion for the PVC food wrap, which we plan to be um, a clean environment, uh, Japanese standards, BRC certified uh, factory um, with 10 uh, uh, new lines, which will make us the undisputed largest producer of uh, food wrap uh, in Asia Pacific, if not the world. Uh, we also uh, planning to have a joint venture to produce a photovoltaic film. Uh, this project is, uh, has been delayed due to the MCO with the machine coming from China. Um, so I thank you. Uh, am I up uh, in terms of time? Thank you very much. I uh, hand over to you, Kamaro. Yeah, okay. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Ang, for your presentation. Very, very elaborate and uh, very detailed. So, okay, we, mo we move on to Q&A now. Um, so there are plenty of questions here. So, uh, and also that since we're um, slightly pressed for time, we'll focus on the more pressing matters here. So uh, I I'm gonna combine some of the questions which are quite related. So we'll start with um, about um, your view, Mr. Ang, on the 
or the increase of uh, raising price of the, the PEs and PPs, and also that now that the US dollar is um, losing strength uh, against the ringgit. So what is your view on this matter and um, how will this impact the financial performance of your plastic packaging um, um, segments uh, going forward? Um, the increase in the price of raisin recently is not very drastic. Um, there's uh, a five, uh, between five to 10% increase. This is due to the, uh, initially it was the closure of the plant when uh, the, the uh, uh, refineries uh, slowed down uh, due to the uh, soft demand, uh, MCO everywhere in the world shut down. Uh, and oil price, you remember, went down to negative level uh, for the first time in history, probably. Uh, and it was very bad. The oil company was bad, very, very badly impacted. Uh, the slashing uh, cost staff everywhere now. Uh, and uh, due to the close down, uh, and then there was, after the, the first, second wave, there was a pickup in, in economic activity. Uh, and uh, thus there's a, a lag behind in terms of startup and all that. Uh, and it was, there was a slight increase. And then uh, Laura hit the, the coast of uh, <coughs> US and uh, shut down about 20% of all uh, cracker in, uh, in US. Um, uh, if I've got time, I can explain, uh, you know, how this process moved, but the cracker means uh, the uh, the, from the fracking of uh, shale gas, it goes in the cracker to crack the, the ethane gas, uh, which they don't like. They like uh, methane, uh, which they make met, um, uh, uh, methanol and uh, natural gas and all that. Uh, ethane gas is mostly used to be cracked and made into ethylene, which is polymerized in a reactor to polyethylene, uh, which we use, our raw material. Um, this uh, hurricane has caused... Um, uh, major shutdowns and uh, shortage of uh, ethylene in uh, in US. They're buying uh, ethylene from the the the, the, the Gulf, uh, Middle East, and uh, this has caused some shortage and thus the increase in price. Um, uh, we heard that these plants are all moving uh, back after the uh, the hurricane, and uh, we believe that uh, this price increase is not very is not really sustainable and price will continue to stay at a very low level due to the excess capacity generated from the shale gas uh, plant in, in the US. Uh, there's still uh, still plants growing up uh, um, and existing plants moving to their maturity levels. Um, <clears throat> and uh, this temporary, this, this is quite uh, temporary, it's, it's good for uh, uh, you know, the, the NAFTA base players, the Petronas, Petro, Petronas gas, sorry, Petronas uh, chemicals and also Titan and all that moving forward a bit. Uh, but um, uh, I think this is uh, not uh, really sustainable and uh, moving forward in the next uh, few years, uh, price will continue to stay at very low levels and uh, will be very conducive for our growth uh, in the next five years. Uh, which we plan to, you know, from you've got big plans to accelerate growth, uh, to double up the, the revenue. We realize that uh, the US dollars has been a softening, uh, which is uh, not very good for us being uh, in, in US dollars. But uh, you also, if you look at our balance sheet, we've continued to uh, realize it. Uh, and it, this is not probably not sustainable, uh, the, the, the low ringgit levels. Uh, and we have hedged this position by having uh, a lot of uh, US dollar based loans. All our machines are all tied to US dollar loans um, and so to a certain extent Euro loans as well, which is very cheap. The US dollars is, <coughs> you know, the interest rate moving south uh, 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 during the MCO in Europe and in uh, in, in US and uh, it is very, very conducive for us. We, we receive the revenue in US dollars and we use this, this US dollars to pay off the loans. Thus, uh, we have a, a very natural hedge, uh, our position, uh, and we are not so much exposed uh, to the US dollars movement, which, which we don't want anyway. We are not in the, in the business of speculating on, on US dollars.
So you can't hear you, Yamaro. You are muting, you're muted. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, um, okay. Uh, yeah, on the matter of uh, plastic packaging, um, now that developed countries and economies, they, they are talking about sustainability and then saying that, oh, plastics are, are evil or that, or that it's bad for the environment. And then now even with the investing community, now they see um, they want to do ESG uh, type of investing, which is uh, environmental, social and governance kind of um, uh, friendly kind of investments. So, um, what is your view um, on on Tongguan like uh, being able to do um, environmental friendly or sustainable kind of packaging, uh, and also that that uh, how uh, is there any move to, to to move towards the more sustainable and also and also uh, environmental friendly and ESG kind of investing for uh, Tongguan? What is ESG by the way? Uh, is it environmental? social and our governance so it looks at the at how the company tackles uh, the, the environmental issues um, social matters um, being that it helps the not just the shareholders but the stakeholders and also governance um, to be more transparent in terms of the in terms of the disclosure and 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 yeah we are very, very very transparent you know we uh, we've got nothing to hide we, we uh, you know it's what you see is what you get uh, you know our uh, concept you know we at regular meetings with shareholders, we, uh, you know, our annual report is very transparent. We have uh, regular people visiting us uh, and, and all that. Uh, and in terms of governance, the our chairman is the Tongo Raja Muda. He's very, very strict. He's a lawyer and very, very strict. Uh, <laughs> uh, in terms of sustainability, it is a big big time, you know, uh, we've been moving big time to sustainability uh, and this is this word is very, very, it's always repeated, it's very strongly behind our uh, our values and moving forward our direction as well. Um, uh, if you talk about plastic being evil and all that, I will have to completely disagree with you. I be, we, we believe that plastic is one of the most environmentally friendly resource that you can use in this world. But unfortunately, it's been uh, very misrepresented, being misinterpreted, and uh, uh, by the, uh, uh, the the social network and the, uh, the the media. And you know, if you look at the fact, you know, the fact is that uh, um, plastic has helped us in terms of uh, uh, preserving our food. You know, uh, plastic is one of the. Uh, it's very light. The density of plastic is less than one gram per centimeter cube. That is the density of water. So thus, it floats under the water. You know, so uh, uh, everybody sees the plas plastic flowing on uh, floating. You know, all these are all management basically. You see plastic floating onto your on your uh, drainage and all that. Clock up the drain, crossing flood and all that. Go to move to the river and uh, have polluting the river to the sea, and you have a ocean of plastic in the middle of the of the ocean right but all the other garbage you don't see because it's tenggelam you know it's <laughs> it's, it's, it's under there um, these are all leakages mainly from developing countries china indonesia philippines malaysia thailand uh, you know india the, the likes of it in the developed countries you don't have such uh, big problems um, in Japan, it is managed very well. You know, it's it boils down to management. Basically, basically, there's no no major leakages in Japan. Everything is incinerated. You know, we make a lot of garbage back to Japan. We know uh, every prefecture has got their own incinerators, and is in Singapore is incinerated. Taiwan fit uh, similarly in Switzerland and the like. It's all incinerated, and uh, they take care of their, their garbage. The their social uh, um, conscience and, and all that, they don't litter everywhere, you know, the problem is basically littering with plastic. It is not uh, plastic being an environmentally unfriendly and evil and the like. The evil is the litterer, basically, and how to manage this litterer, all right? You throw everywhere, of course, you know, you even, you know, your 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 cigarette butt and all that, you know, it goes down to the sea and the like, it's the same thing, you know, why blame uh, plastic, you know? Because plastic is light, so it floats and you see it. Right, uh, plastic uh, is is very very friendly. Just imagine your mineral water bottles, right? I I I I I, I uh, explain to you, your mineral water bottle after its life, you know, it will be it's, it's basically polyester like pad like basically. You know your your shirt. If you look at the, the labels of your shirt, is it says probably thirty percent, forty percent polyester. 
What, where does this come from? From the mineral water bottle, which is very, very clean. Your Coke bottles and all that is sugary and all that, of course, it's very a bit harder to recycle, but recycling is the, is the word. There's no end to the to recycling of plastic. We are just uh, borrowing that, that NAFTA, you know, that NAFTA is basically around 80, which, which is not powerful to, to run your car from the refinery, right? You get your kerosene, your jet fuel, and all the purest stuff, and petrol and diesel and whatnot. 4% of it is NAFTA. NAFTA, use, they used to burn it away, cannot use, you know. And then they, they find ways to crack the NAFTA into monomer and polymerize it into polyethylene, which, which we use. From that drop of NAFTA, we borrow it, and there's no life to the recycling process. There's no life to the, to the end of the, the plastic. You're borrowing that NAFTA. If you, in the morning, you crank your car, you know, you burn your fossil fuel, and that's finished already. Okay, it's polluting the environment and all that, and you don't even realize it, and nobody complain. Uh, of using uh, fossil fuel cars and all that, right? Because you don't see, maybe, you know, you need, still need to use it, right? Why complain about this, you know? When this is much, much more environmentally friendly. The drop of, uh, of, of, of NAFTA we make into, into plastic and it's recycled until no end, you know? All right? At the end of its life, when it cannot be recycled anymore, it's dirty, it's polluted and all that, a wet piece of plastic has got more energy than a dry piece of wood. In Japan, they compact the, 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 the plastic that they cannot use anymore, and they, they, they use it as replacement for coke, which is burning the, uh, continue to burn the furnaces of uh, steel mill, clink, uh, cement clinkers, the uh, um, uh, incinerators and, and the like. And, uh, and uh, because of its high uh, kilojoule energy, uh, it's basically uh, petrochemical, uh, petroleum, you know, uh, carbon hydrogen chain, high energy, and it, 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 it's, it's able to, to give you uh, very high burning uh, uh, energy. Uh, and, uh, you know, that's how uh, we, it should work, you know, in, in, uh, if it's managed properly, all right? Uh, and we've, on our part on sustainability, we've continued to develop uh, recyclable, rec able to be recycled materials, mono materials for, for, for your packaging of food, down gauging the use, right gauging the, the usage of film uh, uh, to use less uh, uh, plastic, less resources uh, uh, burden to, to the world, you know, for, for the sustainability and all our in-house waste, we recycle it. It's basically money, you know, the clean uh, uh, plastic. Uh, of course, the post-consumer waste is very difficult, you know, those that you'll be in and all that, talking about uh, and all that. Uh, and uh, it is the most economical way to pack your goods, your garbage bags, your, your, your t-shirt bag is being reused as a bin liners, you know, your, your Tesco bags. Uh, how much more environmentally friendly you use it several times, you know. Uh, it's not single use, you know, for, for, for that matter. Uh, and there's no replacement, there's no substitute to it. That's the, that's the, 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 the thing, you know. So if you don't use it, your food will go to waste. You cannot produce en masse to satisfy the, 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 the growth of the world population. And you need to use other resources, which is more taxing to the world. Believe me, paper, for example. Yeah, yeah, it's good to hear that the plastic manufacturer's side of the story, you know, because we always hear from the environment, environmentalists and all that. So, uh, okay, just because of we are pressed for time right now, um, so, so probably just one more, one last question. Uh, on the matter of the MCO and the lockdown, like, is it, on a net-net basis, is, is it a positive thing or a negative thing for, for Tongguan? Um, and also that, uh, if, uh, how, how do you see that um, Tongguan's growth will be like after the pandemic is over? Okay, uh, MCO has not helped. Uh, basically, MCO uh, has caused uh, uh, not so good. There's some positive things, you know, but uh, basically it slowed down our growth, uh, travel restriction, basically the export to more than 80 countries, our guys need to travel to meet. Uh, it saves a bit of cost, of course, you know, everybody is on Zoom, like we are now, <laughs> video conferencing, uh, uh, and it's more efficient, you know, talking to the uh, customers and all that, or we did, we via video conferencing, and we're getting used to it. It's like, it's a, it's a new normal, <laughs> actually, which is, which is very, very good uh, um, uh, moving forward, yeah. Um, but the travel restriction, you know, you cannot meet face-to-face, -face, uh, meetings and all that. 
uh, our machine has been delayed. You know, it's been our our premium stretch film line, which is waiting a lot of orders waiting uh, is uh, is sitting at a new factory for the past five months, and we hope to run it. The new engineers cannot come in. Travel restriction from Europe and from Singapore, and and uh, we're trying to get one guy from Singapore to come in and help. Uh, but is uh is 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 slowing us down a lot. Uh, the the MCO. Initially, the, the, when they restrict the number of workers, uh, our garbage bag section, which more labor intensive, suffered a bit, uh, which we picked up already, the, the orders and all that subsequently. Uh, moving forward, uh, after the, uh, if there's travel restriction is lifted, then it will be good for us, we can fly again. <laughs> so we hope that uh, we can continue our growth, uh, growth path. Uh, um, with the normalization uh, of travel, travel traveling is basically you know our Myanmar projects and and, and the like is is uh, is holding us back a bit. Yeah, yeah. I uh, probably probably uh, even after the pandemic is over, we can do more video calls uh, so we can save more costs. Uh. <laughs> yeah, sure, sure, yeah, love it. Yeah. <laughs> but um, okay. Uh, thank you so much, Mr. Ang, for your presentation. We um, it has been very insightful and very detailed and um. Probably or also probably you can you can share with uh, with with the listeners here um when is the third quarter results going to be so probably you can look forward to it or if, if you have set a date. Oh okay, uh, the third quarter result. Uh... Wow, wow. Uh, I think it is going to be uh, the exact date is. Uh... November the 18th, yeah. Okay, okay, all right. So probably we'll look, we'll look forward for your third quarter results. And um, uh, thank you everyone for for um tuning to to the web to, to this webinar. Um, again, Mr. Ang, thank you so much for your presentation. Yeah. Um, and and we look forward to to having all of you to to, to listen to our next webinar session. Uh, with that, thank you everyone. Uh, and have a good weekend. Thank you very much.